Before we begin, uh, if we could, I'd like to invite Sam Nichols with uh, Cairo First Baptist Church up to uh, to give us a, a short invitation. Sam. <laughs> Father, we come right now and we praise you because you are our creator. You are the creator of every person, regardless of race, color, or creed. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for that. And Lord, we know you are the author of order, and that's why you've created uh, communities and towns and government, and we thank you for that. And Lord, one of your attributes is that you are love. And Lord, that's what our town wants to be about, is love and not hate. And we praise you and say this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. I do have some prepared remarks that I would like to uh, give you this afternoon to kind of bring you up to date on uh, where we are on the recent uh, uh, activities that have taken place in Cairoville. Uh, this morning, Cairoville detectives charged two juveniles with, uh, who were involved in vandalism of several vehicles in the Cairoville High School lot and surrounding neighborhood on Sunday night. A 13-year-old Cairoville Middle School eighth grader and a 14-year-old Cairoville High School freshman both were charged through juvenile court with vandalism and civil rights intimidation. I'm here to offer my personal apologies to Dr. Jason Mitchell and in my capacity as mayor to offer an apology on behalf of the entire community. Uh, I'm confident that I speak for all of Cairoville in saying that this act of hatred and intolerance is reprehensible and it disgusts us. This is an appalling and offensive display of ignorance. It is an affront to the Cairoville that we know and love and it is alien to the community that I grew up in. Dr. Mitchell, I'm sorry that this senseless act happened to you. Please accept my apologies. This cowardly act in no way represents the character, culture, and sentiment of the Cairoville community at large. I, stay, I stand here today united with my fellow board members, school board members, community leaders, and local uh, clergy in opposition to any hatred directed at any member of our community based on race, religion, nationality, age, sex, or any other identities that make up the diversity of our community. Today, our community and our country needs prayer. Amen. I ask everyone to join me today and in the days ahead to pray for our nation, for healing in the hearts of tainted by, that are tainted by hatred and divisiveness, and to pray for the young boys who committed this act that shames us all. My hope is that Cairo citizens will join us in denouncing this and any hatred, uh, just hateful gestures and acts that instill fear and spread mistrust and further divides our community. And at this time, I'd like to call on Dr. Mitchell for some more. My apologies, Dr. Mitchell. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming this afternoon to share with us uh, and hear uh, these comments and remarks. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank the mayor uh, for reaching out uh, to me. I appreciate that uh, he was very, uh, uh, he quickly responded uh, to uh, me and the situation and reached out. And we both began to have a conversation and dialogue about uh, how we can take this situation and turn it into a positive. And so with that being said, I want to thank the mayor and accept your apology. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the bold statement uh, to represent the city of Cardinal as a whole. Uh, I also want to thank uh, a few more people. Uh, number one, I want to thank Officer Hurdle. He was the officer who responded uh, to the situation and took the report and initiated the investigation. So I want to thank him. I want to also thank Detective Hill. He's the lead detective on the case and was able to turn this around uh, in less than 48 hours and have charges uh, brought forth. So we definitely want to thank him. I uh, also want to thank uh, the Superintendent of the Cardinal Schools, uh, Mr. A, Mr. Atkins, uh, we really appreciate you and your collaboration working with us to uh, bring uh, shine a light on this situation. Uh, and the principal of Cardinal High School, I uh, want to definitely thank him, Mr. Blanchard, uh, in working together with us to bring about uh, awareness to the situation and making sure that we are all engaged in the solutions and the road ahead. I want to also make it known and clear, abundantly clear, that while the actions of those two young men uh, are not accepted in any way, and we stand completely against it 100%, uh, I want to make it clear that as a uh, 
faith believer, a believer in Jesus Christ. Uh, we believe in hope. We believe in restoration. We believe in forgiveness. And I want to make it known that I forgive those two young men for what they did, uh, though it's not uh, excusable. Uh, and I'm very happy that charges have been brought forward. Uh, I'm more concerned about their future and how we're going to leverage this opportunity again to bring about the kind of change that our country needs to see. With all the things that are going on in the United States, we know that we have a problem with race. We know we have a problem with hate. And unfortunately, too many people are turning their heads to the real issues at hand. And we want to be able to address them and not sit silently. I'll tell you this brief uh, encounter that I had with a couple of parents uh, who are citizens of Carbonville who called my church uh, concerned uh, because their children are students at Carbonville High School. With that being said, uh, I had to remind them, uh, you don't need to take your child out of Carterville High School uh, because you may be taking them out of the boiling pot to the frying pan. What I did encourage them to do is to use their voice. They told me uh, that they uh, have experienced, or their children rather, have experienced similar hate crimes, but for fear, <coughs> kept their mouths closed because they didn't want retaliation. And so I believe that the good Lord provided an opportunity for me to be able to experience a similar act and use my platform to speak up. And with that being said, we saw how all the other uh, officers were able to work in collaboration and bring about charges in such a quick manner. Why don't we use that same kind of energy to bring about the change that we need to ensure this never happens again? And I believe and I'm hopeful that we can bring that kind of change to not only the city of Carleville, but my greatest hope is that we'll be able to work together with the mayor, the city officials, and the other elected officials and come together and create a model that will represent how we can bring this change together for the entire country. We can do it. Yes, this may be a small town, but it can make a big impact. Now, I am a resident of the city of Memphis, and I believe that we can come together and make some things happen to show the city of Memphis how we can make this change happen, because Memphis is also struggling with the same race and hate issues, but we can come together and bring about that kind of change. One of the things that's very important to us is that we want to be able to create partnership and collaboration because this conversation has to happen. So with that being said, we've talked with the mayor, and we're not going to go into any great detail, but to elaborate a little bit more on that hope that we have, you know, we have some recommendations and some things that we believe that we outline uh, with the city and work together in collaboration and partnership that we can begin to see that kind of change start here in Carlinville and spread to other cities in this country. And so I have with me uh, Pastor Earl Fisher, and before he comes and talks a little bit about some of our uh, expectations and hope and give an overview of that, uh, I want to also thank uh, the uh, community uh, leaders and pastors who have stood with me and responded uh, uh, to show their collaboration and work uh, with, with us in our efforts to make this happen. Dr. Stacy Spencer of uh, New Direction Christian Church, uh, who is a resident of Carlinville and a community leader well known and respected in his community, Pastor Earl Fisher. And there are others that uh, are, are engaged in helping us to make that happen. <coughs> pastor Earl Fisher is the pastor of the Abyssinian Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee. And he's no stranger to uh, this work that has gone forth. And we're part of community programs uh, that work with the city, work with the government, work with schools in order to bring awareness to these kind of issues. As the mayor said, hate is not accepted. And I really want to appreciate you for being one of the few people uh, of Caucasian persuasion to come out and say you denounce this activity. Job well done. There should be more like you that stand up and say the exact same thing. And we stand with you. And as we outline some of the plans that we want to roll out, uh, again, Pastor Earl, he'll just give an overview. We're not going to go in detail, but we're excited about meeting with you. And we're excited about meeting with your board and meeting with the schools to educate our young people to go in and talk about these learned behaviors that generate this kind of hate in our country. Because we don't want Carlyville and Memphis to become the next city that has a, a, an act of hate or terrorism that spurs up a civil war in this country. So let's do this thing together. Mayor, I'm excited about working with you. 